and you can't just, as a Magazone, go up to 100 energy because you get to it. Yeah, let's see if he did the buzz wall. Uh, but he did second best thing going into the Glagar, but unfortunately, we all know how much damage a Magnazone can dish out into this Glagar. Let's see if Paula goes straight for the wild charge or will she do... Oh, this is a big... Oh, oh. man. He actually sells the bait there here and shielding up the air lace doesn't feel good, but of course, it's still safe for the Magnazone because in the two shields, you win by going straight um, wild. Oh, you, you can go wild charge, I guess, here, but you can also go mirror shot to win the twos. This will help you win the ones. So let's see, Borja does correctly shield the wild charge. It's resisted, but it definitely doesn't look resisted when it lands. Yeah, in comes a second wild charge. At this point, you don't have to shield. You can still preserve your Gligar even if this move lands. But this gives Paula a great advantage that she can preserve her Magnazone. And then suddenly there is another Gligar. Likisang coming in. We, we talked about Likisang being very neutral into her team. And this is exactly the kind of matchup that Likitang wants to be in. Lickitung, though, if it does take an attack breakpoint of the wing attack from Gligar, it's not that great of a matchup as two digs will eventually knock out. It seems like Paula has that breakpoint. Let's see, Body Slam comes down. He will need two to take this one out, but not before Paula Asha gets to that dig. Yeah. yeah. This is looking very bleak for Borean. The Lickitung is already in the yellow, so a dig would be enough to knock it out. This is going to be really close. Will this be enough to take out the Lickitung? Because if it's not, the Lickitung will get to another body slam. Huge dig comes down, and oh, one, one more wing attack. Oh, oh, that's perfect that's, for Paola. Yeah. That's literally perfect. And now you can't bring in the Gligar, and you can't bring in the Lantern. This is so awkward. Yeah, the Gligar can still come in to throw an aerial ace, but then again, then the Lantern has nowhere to go. That's exactly what happens here. Gligar comes in, throws that area lace. It's still going to survive with one HP, but immediately he needs to go into that Lantern. But Lantern is going to be met with two Pokemon that it does not want to see. One is that Magnazone, or the other would be the Altaria. Lantern coming in immediately would basically force this Magnazone to switch back in. Actually, Paula just stays in, probably content getting it into wild charge range, and then maybe is able to just build up the two and win this game clearly. No, still staying in. Yeah, still staying in. It's it's mostly because maybe, maybe the Altaria has a higher attack, so it can win the one shield scenario against the Lantern, especially after the Moonblast lands. At this point, there is no coming back from Borean, even if the pa Paula lets go of this Altaria, it means that the Lantern is in farm down range for that, man uh, for that Magnazone at the back. Yeah, no Thunderbolt is going to be reached. Here comes the serve. It might be just not enough to knock out this Altaria. Paula knows that. And as the surf comes down, she will probably just go right to the Magnazone and clean this game up. There we go. Catches the air as well. This will be a really funny no shield. But Paula respects her opponents and is going to be taking this one down and securing game one pretty effortlessly. Yeah, that was. As you said, maybe it would have been a good idea to go with a buzz wall lead, but I think Borea did the safer play and went Tabufini as opposed to Azumar, which loses both those. But we're going to get into this next game, and it's a great lead for Palasha. Uh, and now the Magnazone is going to go on a tear in the back, I feel like. Oh, wow. This is a great lead for Palasha indeed, but let's see how she decides to play it out. Probably going for the Grass now to take out, the uh, to do a lot of damage onto that Lantern. Lantern, however, opting to no shield. This is not looking great because at this point, if the Lantern does take two Grass Knots, it will be very difficult for Borea to come back into the game. E and even worse if he invests Protect Shields on this matchup. I don't think he can afford to. He has to put this one on the Lickitung as he did last time and kind of just try to neutrally body its way through that Magnazone and the Cresselia. Really, really nice waiting one turn to throw that Grass Knot, making sure it doesn't get caught onto something like a buzzle in the back. Yeah, great. Um, let's say great patience by Paula and showing very good discipline, understanding the potential of Bar Borean catching would end up neutralizing all her charge attack damage. But in comes this Surf, Surf going into the Cresselia. Cresselia being such a bulky Pokemon, wow. it. and what a catch. The one time Paula Shah decided to not be patient, he gets a catch. So that's what happens when you're not patient, I suppose. But at the same time, this glider coming in here is going to align the Magazone perfectly in the back with that Azumarill. And this is going to be a very rough situation here for Bora. Yeah, this is very difficult for Borea as well because the Gligar, not only does Paola have the advantage in the time composition, she has an advantage in the protect shields as well. She has two protect shields to his one, and that is never good. This dig is not going to be enough to knock out, but it's going to put it in wing attack range. If Paolasha actually tries to shield this, maybe it'll farm all the way down. I think that will be a perfect farm down if she does opt for it, though. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I would do, especially because you can bring in your Magnezone now, and I think that's two wall switches that can go through onto the Lickitung. Ooh, and that body slam is not enough, and Paula doing exactly what, what we kind of foresaw, is get that energy onto the Magnezone, because that is going to be the win condition. What Pokemon does Borea bring into this? I do not know. Yeah, Paula's just probably hoping not a Buzzwool. But so far, still thinking, no Buzzwool to be seen. Landry comes in, and that is not a Magnezone answer. I think he's going to get a Switch all the way down. Yeah, two Protect Shields. This is an easy call for Protect Shield number one. Shield ones and completely farm down this Lantern because that is what will give her the win. Wow, oh, look at those damage those Wall Switches do. Does Lantern get to another move? Oh, tries to go into the Azu for a potential catch. Unfortunately, Borea will be catching this Wild Charge. Wild Charge will do a ton of work onto the Azumarill. I think his only play over there was to no shield a potential mirror shot, and that would be a nice win condition, but now while well, Paula just builds up two wild charges, it might be just be game over. Yeah, it's, she has a wild charge and a mirror shot loaded. At this point, Lantern will come in, and that will be enough, that mirror shot oh. will be enough to knock out this Lantern. Ooh, that is still great. Getting off a move, but of course, Paula does have that protection left, pulling it up and going for a big wild charge finish. It's gonna be a Oh, it's not even a big wall charge finish. The wall switch knocks it out, sending Paula to the loser's final. And that will be played in day two. Very impressive.